In terms of a logo relating to a band and the music that inspires it, there are few that fit more than the logo of Public Enemy. For most people, it's tough to remember a time when rap was not a popular genre of music that you would hear on the radio and that MTV would play almost exclusively. And a lot of the popularity and the rise of rap and hip hop as genres can easily be attributed to Public Enemy. The things we're gonna discuss now are this logo absolutely represents the band and we're gonna talk a little bit about the psychology of the logo and finally, I'm gonna show you the aspects of good design that this logo uses. So let's jump right in here. Here's a Public Enemy logo if you're not familiar with it. We did go over this one in our logo overview in the beginning of this chapter. Let me cover the elements of good design and get them out of the way because I think the psychology of this logo is extremely interesting. First off, you have your, your concentric circles, your simple shapes, targeting a person in the center. This is very obviously a, a scope of some sort. So it's very easily recognizable. It, it doesn't matter if it's black on white or white on black or if we come up here to image and adjustments, we'll just go to hue, to hue and saturation and change the color. It doesn't matter what color you make this. I mean, it's obviously always gonna be the same recognizable logo. Okay, let me cancel out of that. So in addition to that, the public enemy letters themselves, these are stencils. This is another very do-it-yourself, which in the early days of rap was something that you, you didn't have a choice. Nobody really knew what rap was. There weren't many companies that were gonna take a chance on rap. So with the words Public Enemy, these are stencils and literally this logo, you could go down to any hardware store and buy these letters or buy stencils for these letters and then just use and spray paint them in. Which brings me to the next point, uh, representative of the, of the band and representative of the genre at the time. So let's talk a little bit about the psychology of this logo because this one's, this one's quite interesting. A lot of people think that this is a, a police officer in the center and I think you know quite possibly that is because of the hat that he's wearing here but in reality the creator of this logo Chuck D the the public enemy front man needed a logo quick so what he did is he had a, a fanzine lying around and he took a picture of E-Love who was LL Cool J's right hand man at the time and he colored him in with a magic marker with the help of an exacto knife the magic marker and some white out he'd come up with this logo. When we talk about the psychology of this logo, we have an interesting duality here. The, the guy in the sights can either represent Public Enemy as a band, it can represent a black man, as you can see, the, the figure is black, and at the time, we're talking 30 years ago in the 80s, racial tensions weren't what they were in the 60s, but they were still really high. So there were a lot of things going on in Chuck D's mind politically that were specific to to him growing up on the streets of New York. In addition, this can also represent, in addition, largely due to the rumor that this was a cop in the sights, this logo can be seen as public enemy is targeting you. So all of this combined essentially serve to separate public enemy from everyone who's basically not a fan. It, 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 there's very much a, a kind of if you're not with us you're against us mentality and if you you picture public enemy and their fans being the ones on the site it's not even like they have a choice so public enemy's lyrics if you listen to them and they're going on in the background the ones i could play anyway very politically charged very politically motivated it's obvious that they weren't happy with what was going on at the time and to a degree even now i'm sure aren't happy with everything that's going on and all of this is reflected in the logo. So this, this logo is absolutely fantastic because, again, I don't think you're gonna find a logo that's more representative of the band who created it. So that's all for now. Please hey everyone, before you go, I want you to keep in mind that this video is part of a larger series. And if you click the link right below this screen, it'll take you to the full course outline where you can then select lesson by lesson which ones you wanna watch. In addition to that, this particular video was a case study. If you have a band that has a logo that you'd like us to go over and explain the design of the logo and how it works, then just send your requests to requestsitmahalo.com. Thanks for watching. An instant. No.